Okay, good morning. Welcome to the uh, NCAA Division I Men's Basketball Championship East Regional here in Washington, D.C. A couple of reminders uh, for our press conference sessions uh, this morning and this afternoon. There is no flash photography in this area. There is also no video recording of any, of any kind from this area. We're going to ask you to please silence your cell phones um, at this time. Uh, I'm going to also describe the satellite coordinates for these press conference sessions. Satellite Galaxy 17, 4, K as in kangaroo, slot C as in Charlie, and the downlink is 11784.5. We're now joined up on the dais by LSU interim head coach Tony Benford. If you can give an opening statement, and we'll open up for a Q&A. We'll also have a couple wireless microphones out there, so please, when you want to ask a question, identify yourself, raise your hand, identify yourself and your affiliation, and uh, we'll wait for the microphone, the wireless mic to be brought to you. Coach? Okay, yeah. yeah first of all, uh, we're excited to, to obviously be in the Sweet 16. This is uh, our guys that worked hard all year uh, to put ourselves in this position. Uh, I'm really pleased with the, the leadership that we've gotten all year from uh, Scholar Mays and uh, Tremont Waters, and those guys have kind of set the example uh, through a lot of the adversity that these guys have gone through all year. So we're excited. Uh, we're looking forward to playing a, a great uh, Michigan State team led by a Hall of Fame coach and Coach Izzo, and we're looking forward to the challenge. All right, Monica, we'll start right down there. Get USA Today. Tony, you had mentioned it a little bit last week, but how has your previous head coaching experience helped the past three weeks in what ways? And then when you also mention that the team had taken ownership, how have they taken ownership? Well, it, it's uh, for his previous head coaching experience, that, that obviously helps. You know, when you, you've been a head coach, you know, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of tough in an adverse situation like this. But uh, as far as managing a team and, and uh, managing practices and uh, coaches and players, uh, I've been in that position and making game in game decisions. So that, that, that uh, previous experience has, has helped in that. And then I think when you have quality players like uh, Tremont and Schuyler and uh, Nas Reed, those guys have taken ownership. They've helped, uh, like I, I mentioned it before. They, uh, they, they've uh, helped keep one another accountable, too, you know. And then on the floor during the end game, like, you got a guy like Trey Munt and, and Sky again. Those guys are really good. They're like coaches out on the floor. And they, they help uh, myself and other coaches uh, for his in-game stuff, uh, tr uh, making adjustments and everything. And we're right down here in row two. Scott Rabelais with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Tony, when, when you looked at y'all's team before the season, you thought, this is a team that could get to, to this point. But obviously, y'all have had you know, so much adversity with – with Wade and now with Coach Sims, what, what qualities do you think have, have, aside from talent, have helped you guys to, to fulfill your, your potential to this point? Well, that, that, that's a good, uh, good question. You, know, you can have good players, but there's got to be, at some point, there's got to be a, uh, a buy-in factor, I think, you know. And, and I think uh, one, one thing about these guys, we've got good character guys, okay. They really, they, they trust one another, they love one another, they respect one another. I think that helps. And we uh, felt like we had, a, you know, we had a chance to, to have a good team. We wanted, obviously, one of our goals was to, you know, to, to uh, have a solid – we had a challenging non-conference schedule. We thought that would prepare us for conference. Then once we got the conference, we thought, we, you know, we would have an opportunity to compete for a championship. And I've uh, got off to a great start. Uh, and and uh, I thought our guys uh, really uh, – probably went, some of those overtime games, close games that we went through, they really bought into, uh, you know, what we were teaching them in practice. You know, for instance, we're working on a six-minute game when we get down and, uh, you know, the close games, what we got to do to finish games. And I thought those guys really bought in and, and, and into execution. And then defensively they bought in. I thought, hey, we got to get stops and then rebound the basketball. But I think just the, the guys, the buy-in factor has been huge for our guys and for our, and our coaches. On the right down here. Uh, Zach Brazil, New York Post. Coach, what's your favorite quality about, about Tremont and – what do you expect out of him facing a player like Cassius Winston tomorrow night? Uh, that's a great – I think he's, he's, he's very competitive. I mean, he, he, Trey Montz is a, is a gamer. I think the, the higher, the bigger the stage, I think you see him take his game to another level. And I think that's one of the things. And, and he's become a great leader. I mean, he's more vocal than he was last year. Uh, I thought when he, you know, he and, and he, he might tell you this, when he put his name in the draft and went through some of the workouts, pro workouts, I thought that was good for him. 
you know, we had a chance to get a lot of feedback from the NBA guys on things that he had to work on. And I thought, you know, one of them was defensively, he had to become a better defender. And uh, he's proven that by being, you know, co-defensive player of the year in our league. And then uh, being more vocal, more of a leader. And he's, he's, he's become more of a leader for us and uh, kind of an extension of, of our coaching staff on the floor. So I, those are some great qualities uh, to have as a point guard. You talked about how the bigger the level, the higher, you know, the bigger the game, the better he is. What do you expect out of him tomorrow night against a player like Winston, arguably the best point guard in the country? Yeah, um, Trey's pretty good too. But I think he'll, he'll, he'll look forward to the challenge. But it's just not going to be Trey, man. We'll have different guys on Cassius, who is a tremendous player. And, but we'll have different guys that are guarding. You can go over there on the right. Jacques Duce, WAFE TV in, in Baton Rouge. Uh, Coach, how would you describe Michigan State's big men? And how did playing Maryland and those guys maybe get you ready? And how did they compare, maybe? Uh, physical. You know, uh, defensive linemen, <laughs> they're, pretty, they're pretty physical. They're good players. Uh, you look at starting with Tillman, who's playing really well. Uh, he's, uh, you know, he does a great job getting great position down there. Then they bring in Nick. Nick has had an injury, but he's really physical, strong. And those two guys right there, can they get position on you, it's over. So our, we got to do our work early in the post, and we got to get great help from our other guys. And then uh, Gones is tough. Gones is a tough matchup. A little, about it, a little bit in they, Michigan State reminds me a lot of Tennessee in our league. You know, for the balance that they have offensively and defensively. And I think a guy like Gones is a little bit like a Schofield pick and pop guy. So they're bigs, uh, they present a problem. Right down on our right Steven here. Steven Wino, Associated Press. Tony, back to, uh, to Tremont. This is a school in Georgetown where, where Tremont originally committed to. How fortunate do you feel as a program that, that he chose to, to, to go to LSU instead? And, and kind of how important is he to, to getting as far as you guys have gotten on this journey? Well, there's no doubt. Uh, we feel very fortunate to have him. And, and Trey is, uh, like I say, he's an extension of, of, you know, of, of, of our coaching staff out there. He's a great leader for our players. I, I tell you, it's, it's, I didn't bring this up, but I thought he did a great job in the summer uh, with his workouts and in the weight room. He's changed his body since he's been with us, too. And he'll tell you that, that he's, uh, he's really just, I think, on and off the floor, he's really matured a lot. We're going to stay right back there on the right-hand side. Yeah, Coach uh, Michael Cobble from WBRZ in Baton Rouge. How much influence, uh, I know you guys talk with Will Wade a lot, how much has he given you guys versus how much do you feel like you've kind of taken control of this and are running it yourself? Well, we, we've, uh, you know, we, like I said, Coach texts with the players and he texts with our coaching staff and stuff, but, you know, he's not here, so we, we've had to take, you know, ownership. We're, we're, you know, Coach Hire, myself, and Coach Armstrong, you know, we got to implement the game camp plan and we're doing the game plan, so, and that's what we got to continue to do. To get, all we're trying to do is give our guys the best chance to win, and so, that, like I said, nothing's changed as far as our routine. You know, Coach uh, Hire has this scout. And he's done a great job preparing our guys for this Michigan State, uh, for the Michigan State game. And, and our guys will be prepared. Stay right down here in the middle. Uh, Glenn Gilbo, USA Today ne Network, Louisiana. Um, Coach, regardless of, of like how you got here, um, are you having the time of your life in your coaching career? Well, uh, that's a good question. Uh, you know, I, I, I told our guys, have fun. You know, all the adversity we've been through in Georgia process, I mean, this is, uh, this is rare. <laughs> you know, you get to a Sweet 16, you can go your whole career. And, you know, a lot of coaches coach and never get to it. A lot of players play and obviously they never get to it. So I told them just to enjoy the moment. Uh, try to, uh, you know, we're just going to try to prepare and get better every day. And, and when game time shows, we'll be ready to compete. No, I, I'm enjoying it. Yeah, I'm enjoying the opportunity to, uh, uh, to to have this opportunity. But my focus is on the on the kids. That's where it's got to be, you know. And I'm not, uh, of course, my experience. I'm enjoying, it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna make sure these guys are prepared. You can go all the way in the back there. Melinda Adams, ESPN. Mm -hmm. Coach, if you could just describe how you're using the adversity, you and the players, to you know, as motivation. Well, good question. Uh, I mean, obviously, guys, when you lose a teammate uh, like these guys, a brother in, in, in uh, Wade. Uh, th I mean, these guys grew up with him, and a scholar is like a brother. They grew up together. You know, that's something that, um, you know, you can you – know, you don't want anybody to go through. And these guys have dedicated the season to Wade. Uh, I mean, everything they do is about 44. Uh, for instance, the other night we were playing Maryland. It was 44 on the scoreboard, and, uh, and Trey just stopped the huddle and said, Coach, look, what's on the scoreboard, guys? And we went out, and, and it was pretty – and the guys got more focused. So we just did it. It's all it's – all, it's been about Wade. Uh, this entire year, and it will be. You know, I told these guys, it, you know, it's, it's the rest of their life. This, this, these guys will, will never forget, will never forget Wade Sims. Yep. Chase Michelson, State News. When you look at a team like Michigan State, and they defend really well from the inside the three-point line, and then your team has struggled from outside the three-point line without revealing the game plan. Sort of, 
what is that challenge like when you're facing a team that maybe their strengths not match up with your weaknesses like that? Well, well, one of the things with, with them, you know, obviously they're, you know, a standing coach and Coach Izzo, but th they're one of the best teams in the country in transition. They get 30% of their points in transition, okay? So we got to do a great job with our defense, okay, of protecting the paint, getting back and protecting the paint. Uh, then conversely, and then rebounding the ball, okay, once we get a stop. And then conversely, we have to push the ball. We got to try to get easy baskets. We're really good. We got guards that can make plays. We're good in transition. We got big guys that can score inside. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a game of wheels. You know, we got to make sure we have good execution on the, in the half court. We can't turn the ball over. Live ball turnovers, they feed off of it. And then we, uh, again, we, we're pretty good on offensive glass. So we got to do a great job of going to the glass uh, like we've been doing all season. Uh, Sheldon Nichols, Baton Rouge advocate. Tony, you, you talk about um, Termont being an extension of the coaching staff on the court. What? What does what goes into that? What do you allow him to do? What do? How long is the leash? Let's put that <laughs> it's it's pretty long. <laughs> no, it's pretty long. But uh, one of the things I think is this: he has uh, on the bench sometimes uh, when he's on the floor, he's communicating with Coach Hyde, Coach Armstrong, uh, sometimes myself. Like for instance, Coach uh, Armstrong will call our defenses out, and so he's got to have constant contact with Coach Armstrong about okay, what are we in? I don't know. Are we picking up full court? We we'll call our fists. Are we in? Uh, you know, if we go, uh, you know, one three one, which we call one. So he's getting the defensive calls uh, from coach all the time. And then for his uh, plays, we want to obviously push. It, we give him freedom to push it in transition. But if it's not there, we want to pull it out and execute and run a run a play, a set play. So he does a good job of, you know, I, I may communicate that to him. But he he has the option of calling that out on his own. Tony, I understand you're not you're not much of a sleeper. Uh, how how are you sleeping these days? <laughs> not much sleep. We're just trying to sleep after this, so we want to keep this thing going. I uh, I don't need much sleep. Right, <laughs> I want to keep this thing going. We're going to our far right, coach. Yeah. Uh, Paul Woody, Richmond Times Dispatch here in, in Virginia. Uh, coach, a lot of teams when they if they lost a player the way you lost a player right before the season began, the season would have been over right then. Why wasn't your season over? What enabled your guys to keep going? That's a really good question. I, I think this, Wade, and these guys will tell you when they come up here, Wade really set the tone uh, with our guys along with Skyler and I thought Cavell Bisley and Trey with these new guys that we had. We had some, a lot of talent coming in. But when we started in June in the weight room, uh, in our individual workouts, uh, in our conditioning through boot camp, Wade was at the front. He was leading these guys. When some of these young guys like Emmett Williams or, or Nas, they would struggle through work, getting through the workouts, he would lead those guys, especially the big guys. And so he, he, Wade set the tone early for our guys, and our guys kind of fed off of that, you know, and they've kind of taken that. And, and like I say, he's, uh, you know, he's, he was a brother to these guys, and they really dedicated the season to him. Any other questions for Coach Benford? We'll take one right here in the middle. Might have time for one or two more. Coach, LSU played Michigan State, and – in 1979, I, I was wondering, you were a kid then, did, did you watch the uh, Michigan State, Indiana State game, the championship game that year? And yeah, yeah, I did. I did, watching Bird and Magic and those guys. Yeah, pretty good players. <laughs> <laughs> well, but uh, was that, what, what else do you remember about that tournament on television? Uh, I mean, I, I think that was well, that's the one that got everything going, you know, what the tournament is today, when you look back on that. I mean, those guys obviously went on and, and they took the pro game to another level, and I thought those two guys are really the ones that kind of set the tone on what you see today in the NBA. What do you remember about when you were playing at, at Texas Tech? What What are your greatest uh, memories of playing? I remember my last at my the tournament. Tur yeah, my tournament. We played uh, George. My senior year, we played Georgetown. I thought they won a national championship. Uh, they had some really good players: David Wingate, uh, Reggie Williams, uh, Michael Jackson, Ralph Dalton. I remember all those guys. We played them in Dayton, and uh, we played pretty well. And then they uh, they ended up beating us, I think, by three points in Dayton. So I remember Coach Thompson. They were a really good group. We got time for one more uh, from Pete. Tony, Pete Thamel, uh, wondering how much you know about Shannon Foreman. He's a guy in Baton Rouge who's been mm -hmm. a, a mentor in Javante's life. How much is he around your program? What do you know about him mentoring kids in the area? No, I, I've met Shannon, uh, you know, and, and he's been, uh, I don't know, as far as mentoring kids, I know he's got a relationship with, uh, with Javante. That's all I know. Mm -hmm. All right, Coach, you're all set. All right, Good thank luck. you, guys. Thanks. We're going to be joined by the LSU student athletes here in about two minutes.
Okay, we're now joined by the LSU student athletes, Nas Reed, Skylar Mays, and Tremont Waters, and we're going to open it up for Q&A right away. So please raise your hand, state your name and your affiliation, and we'll begin. Uh, Chase Michelson, State News. Tremont, when you go up against a point guard like Cassius Winston, obviously that's kind of the marquee matchup here. What do you see out of him, and what do you think you can attack well? Um, obviously he's a, a great all-around player offensively and uh, defensively, but um, watching film, I just see that he's, he's really good in transition. He controls the offense. He runs the team, and everything pretty much runs through him. We'll go on the back there. Adams, ESPN. Skyler, this is for you. If you can just kind of talk, or the other players as well, just how y'all have used the adversity as a motivating factor uh, to get to this point? Uh, yeah, I'm, it started with Wade in September, um, him passing away, and uh, we've definitely used it as a, a driving force in what we've been able to do this season, and we give a lot of the credit in uh, the wins that we've had to him, and uh, obviously with what happened with Coach Wade, uh, you know, we just see it as uh, an opportunity to prove ourselves when uh, chips are down. So I think we've done a tremendous job of that, and uh, it's going to continue to drive us as we move forward. Guys, we'll go over here on our left. Bob Wanowski, Detroit News. For Tremont, follow up on Cassius Winston. And I think your coach referred to him, he reminded him of Kemba Walker. Do you take a matchup like this personally, and do you feel like you have some attributes, quickness and stuff like that that you can use on him? Um, I would say I take every uh, every game personal. Um, it's a team sport, obviously, and I don't necessarily get into the matchups and everything that goes into that. Uh, that's for everyone else to pretty much evaluate. I go in knowing that I have to run my team. Um, it's about myself and my teammates and the coaching staff. So, I, like he said, uh, I heard Coach Benford. He said he's a great point guard. He's He controls the offense and everything. But my job is to go out and run my team and uh, – just pretty much do what I have to do to help us win. So that's really it. We're going to stay in the back, guys, on our right-hand side. Um, Tim Lee from Tanson. So you guys huddled together when the score reached 244, and all of you have a huge performance in the late game. So what was the emotion like at that moment? Can you share with us? Naj, yeah, you, you want to take that? Um, we've been through, like, adversity moments before. I mean, I mean, for the score to be 44, I mean, it was actually um, something Tremont pointed out. And then, um, it was actually something that we all, you know, realized that, you know, it was time to go out and play our game and, you know, do the best that we can. And everything was for him and Coach Wade. I mean, they obviously both play a big part in what we do. I mean, without them, we like, like, like Scott said, we wouldn't be here before. I mean, we wouldn't be here right now. And, um, I mean, just getting through moments like that, you know, helps the team a lot. Other questions for the LSU student athletes? We'll go right down here in row two. A couple right here, down here in row two. Uh, Tremont, um, Shel Sheldon Mickles, Baton Rouge Advocate. Uh, coach Benford just talked to you, talked about you as a extension of the coaching staff. How how do you take that? Um, you know, when they they talk about that, and how much freedom have you gotten this year? Maybe not necessarily just recently. Um, I would say my. I was sitting behind the curtains when he was talking, so I would say uh, my leash is pretty long. Uh, they allowed me to to um, play my game, obviously, run the team, and they trust me with the ball in late, uh, late game situations, and they, they trust that I'm going to make the right reads for my teammates as, uh, as well. So just knowing that I have my teammates, uh, or they have confidence in me, and my coaches have, have a, uh, a ton of confidence in me, just it makes me play a lot more relaxed, if that makes sense, because I'm able to do, just play off instinct, make reads, and pretty much run the show. So that just, it's a very uh, free-flowing offense, if if I would say that, yeah. Trey Mount, uh, Ben Standig, NBC Sports Washington. We know you were uh, originally going to come to Georgetown, so you would have actually been in this building before. Just curious, what ultimately led you to sort of make the decision to go to LSU? And as you sit here in the NCAA tournament, how do you kind of how do you kind of look back at that at that decision and and your journey to get here? Yeah, uh, I was uh, committed to Georgetown, like you just said, and the coaching staff was on edge about being fired or whatever, um, and they pretty much talked about that all season. So my parents and I we 
he kept noticing that, uh, that they were talking about that, and then he actually got fired. So I just reopened my recruitment, and Coach Wade stepped into the picture, and it, it fit. Skyler, I know you, you get a little freedom too probably, but is your leash a little bit shorter? Than, and, and how does Tremont do as a coach on the court? Uh, uh, I, think, I think my leash is pretty long as well. Probably not as long as Tremont's, uh, but uh, as far as Tremont's game, Tremont you know, runs the show for us. He's done a tremendous job all season. And, uh, you know, he just, he's just what makes us go on the offensive and defensive end. So, uh, you know, we've got his backs with, uh, you know, pretty much everything he does. And, you know, every shot he takes, we think he's going to make. And, you know, we think he's going to make the right play all the time. So, you know, we just go as he goes. And, and uh, it's been working for us. Uh, this is kind of just a general question for really all of you. Like, what do you see on film out of Michigan State that you think – Wow, this is really a strength for them. And what do you see that you think like we can attack this and help us win? Naj, you want to start with that one? Um, they're a team that can go. They play quick. They play fast, kind of like us. Um, the bigs are tough, physical. I mean, the guards, they get in the lane. They can score the ball, shoot the ball. I mean, they can do a lot of things that we can do. I mean, they're a great team. You know, they one of the best teams in the country, I would say. And, um, you know, we're just looking to go after them. Skyler, do you have anything to add about the Michigan State scouting report? Yeah, uh, the coaches have stressed transition a lot. Um, you know, they play really fast, so a big key for us is going to be getting back in transition defense, and hopefully we can just uh, try to make things tough on uh, their guards and uh, see what happens. Guys, we're going to go over here to our left-hand side. Uh, it's for all you guys, uh, whoever wants to answer it. Uh, Michigan State's obviously a little thin right now rotation-wise, about six deep. What type of things do you do to attack a team that, that's thin, whether it's getting out and running to try and wear them down or trying to get them in foul trouble? Well, this is uh, pretty much out to the public because this is media, so we don't want to give our games uh, game schemes out. But <laughs> as a team, we just continue to do what we do, uh, push the ball and play our game. We play in transition. We like to play uh, free-flowing um, and pretty much play inside out. I mean, based on the film, I mean, they're going to play hard regardless. It, it, they put, like those guys go out there and play as if they've got somebody who's going to give them some rest time. So, uh, you know, they play really fast, and I don't think uh, how much depth, per se, they have uh, is going to affect uh, how fast they play and how hard they play. So uh, we can't look at them having six guys playing as an advantage. And, uh, you know, they're going to give us a, a – uh, a tough, they're going to give us challenges in some areas, and we're going to try to do the same to them. Right down here in the front. Uh, Scott Rappelay with the Baton Rouge Advocate. Skyler, uh, obviously, it's well documented, your season has been bookended by these two huge issues. Uh, how have you, what qualities about your team, the, and, and a lot of these guys you didn't know before the last year or so, has allowed you all to live up to your potential to this point? Um, the, you're talking about the issues as far as. No, yeah, I'm just how, how have y'all gotten past all that to, to be the, the team that has gotten to this point to win the SEC, that sort of thing? I um, mean, me personally, I haven't gotten past uh, what happened to Wade. I'm, I'll never get past what happened to Wade. Uh, I'm pretty sure I could say the same for all of these guys. Um, Coach Wade, I mean, with uh, what happened with Coach Wade, I mean, we're just going to have to move forward. That's something that none of us can control. And, um, you know, we're out here to play basketball for the university. So, uh, at the end of the day, the ball isn't going to stop bouncing for us, uh, whether he's on the court. Uh, I mean, whether he's on the sideline or not. So uh, we've used it to come together, and um, we're here. Stay right down here in the front with Ben. Uh, ben Stand again, BC Sports Washington. A nod for you, uh, having just kind of seen you mostly the last couple, uh, couple games. You've got sort of the old school uh, center game. How, how do you? Is, I guess is that a fair way to assess your game? And how do you kind of feel you fit in with sort of this modern? Uh, game where it's like, you know, shooting three pointers, spreading the court, things like that. Mm. I guess that's a way to put it. Uh, I mean, I kind of just work on my game as it is, like handling the ball and post moves, hook shots, shooting threes. I mean, it's just something I work on. So it's it's kind of something that comes and like 
I mean, all related to the modern game because, I mean, a lot of bigs nowadays handle the ball, shoot the ball, and, you know, pretty much do guard play. Um, I mean, it isn't easy. So, I mean, for you to be able to do it at the, at the size and the way and things of that nature, people are surprised. Um, but when you work on it consistently, I mean, it comes to you. Any other questions for the LSU student athletes? We got one, one more. I think we got time for one more in the back. Uh, Will Shanahan, the Georgetown Voice. Nas, you guys played um, a couple of formidable bigs in Fernando and Smith from Maryland last week, but now you've had a longer layover before some other interesting front court matchups this week. How do you and Cavell kind of approach um, kind of playing down low? Would you guys say it's mostly a matter of game plan implementation or just going out there and seeing what happens? I mean, Game plan, of course, and then just, you know, just playing tough. You know, those those two bigs, I mean, they're really tough. They're strong. I mean, they're physical. I mean, they really they really get after it. So just playing tough, physical uh, basketball, and just like I, said, like I said before, doing what we do, I mean, they're going to get buckets, and, you know, they're going to do what they do. So, I mean, it's going to be all within the game. All right, guys, you guys are all set. Good luck. Thank, Thank you, Joe. We will have the we will have the Michigan State student athletes on the dais at ten after twelve. Michigan State student athletes at twelve ten, followed by Michigan State head coach Tom Izzo, starting at twelve twenty five. Pick up the not, pick up the uh, enthusiasm there out there. Get a follow up. I'll, I'll, I'll get you. A, yeah, I'll get you a follow up. Yeah. Yes. Uh, we start at um, twelve ten. Five five after five after. 